Today, we're taking a look at the last battleship completed by the USA, the last battleship to be decommissioned. She took part in three conflicts from 1944 to 1992, nearly 50 years of service, of which 16 were active. Most people know her as the site where the Japanese Empire signed her surrender, or as the ship in the movies Under Siege with Steven Seagal, or Battleship, in which she destroys the alien invaders. Even Cher shot a music video on board of this magnificent ship. She is often called Mighty Mo or Big Mo, but her official designation is BB-63 USS Missouri. Hello everybody, my name is General History and today is our first warship. Now I have to say, one of my cats decided to lay against my back and the back side of my chair, which is pretty uncomfortable, but we're gonna do it. Let's hope he doesn't ruin our recording by walking over my desk. Let's see how it goes. The USS Missouri is a United States Navy Iowa class battleship and the third to be named after the state of Missouri. She was the third of the Iowa class but was actually finished later than the fourth vessel. The Iowa class battleships were part of the fast battleship program which were planned in 1938 by the preliminary design branch at the Bureau of Construction and Repair. She had a length of 270.4 meters, was 33 meters wide and had a draft of 8.8 .8 meters. She could reach a speed of 32.7 knots or 60.6 kilometers per hour, which if you put it into perspective is only a little slower than the USS Fletcher, a destroyer with a speed of 36 knots or 70 67 kilometers per hour. The USS Missouri would be complemented by a crew of 2,700 officers and enlisted men. She was laid down at the Brooklyn Navy Yard on the 6th of January 1941, launched on January 29, 1944, and commissioned on June 11 with Captain William Callahan in command. She was the last battleship to be decommissioned and struck from the records. She was christened at the launching by Mary Margaret Truman, daughter of Harry S. Truman, at that moment still the senator of the state Missouri. Missouri's main battery consisted of nine 16-inch or 406mm slash 50 caliber Mark 7 guns, which could fire a 2,700 pound or 1,200 kilogram armor-piercing shell 32.2 kilometers or 20 miles. The 50 calibers as with tank guns indicates the length of the barrels by multiplying the bore diameter times 50. The secondary batteries consisted of 25 inch or 127 millimeter 38 caliber guns and 10 double gun turrets with five on each side of the superstructure. These guns were dual purpose which meant that they could be used to engage surface targets or elevated higher up to engage air targets. These 5 inch guns had a range of about 16 kilometers or 10 miles. At this age the threat from air strikes was large and the need to gain and maintain air superiority was necessary to protect the growing fleet of allied aircraft carriers. To this end Missouri was fitted with Ehrlichan 20 mm and Bofors 40 mm anti-aircraft guns to defend itself and allied carriers from enemy air attack. The USS Missouri had a 20 and 40 mm AA guns removed and was outfitted with the Phalanx CIWS armored box launchers and quad cell launchers designed to fire the Tomahawk missiles and Harpoon missiles respectively when she was reactivated in 1984. Missouri and her sister ship Wisconsin were fitted with thicker traverse bulkhead armor compared to the other two ships of the class, Iowa and New Jersey which increased the armor from 11.3 inches or 287 millimeters to 14.5 inches or 368 millimeters. The USS Wisconsin was the highest numbers, numbered US battleship built but was completed before the Missouri and the BB-65 to BB-71 of the Montana class were ordered but never built and cancelled which is why the USS Missouri is the last battleship of the US Navy. 
After trails of the New York coast and shakedown and battle practice in the Chesapeake Bay, Missouri departed Norfolk, Virginia on the 11th of November 1944, transited the Panama Canal on the 18th of November, and steamed to San Francisco for final fitting out as a fleet flagship. She stood out of San Francisco on the 14th of December and arrived at Pearl Harbor on the 24th of December 1944. She then departed Hawaii on January 2nd, 1945, and arrived in Ulity, West Caroline Islands, on the 13th of January. She was a temporary headquarters ship for Vice Admiral Mark A. Mitchell. She put to sea on the 27th of January to serve in the screen of the Lexington Carrier Task Group of Mitchell's Task Force 58. And on 16th of February, the Task Force aircraft carriers launched the first naval airstrikes against Japan since the famed Doolittle Raid which had been launched from the carrier Hornet in April 1942. She then steamed with the carriers to Iwo Jima, where her main guns provided direct and continuous support to the invasion landings that begun on the 19th of February. After Task Force 58 returned to Ulity on the 5th of March, she was assigned to the Yorktown Carrier Task Group. On the 14th of March, Missouri departed Ulity again in the screen of fast carriers and they steamed up to the Japanese mainland where the group would carry out strikes against targets along the coast of the Inland Sea of Japan. Beginning on the 18th of March, the USS Missouri shot down four Japanese, Japanese aircraft. The raids against the airfields and naval bases near the Inland Sea and southwestern Honshu continued, and when the carrier Franklin suffered the battle damage, the Missouri Carrier Task Group provided cover for the Franklin's retreat to Ulity. Until the 22nd of March, and then set course for pre invasion strikes and bombardment of Okinawa. She joined the fast battleships of Task Force 58 in the bombarding of the southwest coast of Okinawa on the 24th of March, which was intended to draw enemy forces away from the west coast beaches, which would be the actual site of the invasion landings. Missouri joined the screen of carriers as Marine and Army units stormed the shores of Okinawa on the morning of April 1st. An attack by Japanese forces was repulsed successfully. On the 11th of April, a low-flying Kamikaze Zero crashed on Missouri's starboard side, although fired upon. The Zero hit just below her main deck level. The starboard wing of the plane was thrown far forward, starting a gasoline fire at 5-inch gun mount number 3. She suffered superficial damage and the fire was quickly brought under control. The remains of the pilot were recovered on board of the ship just aft of one of the 40mm gun tubs. The crew wanted to host the remains of over the side, but Captain Callahan decided that the young Japanese pilot had done his job to the best of his ability and with honor, so it was decided that he should be given a military funeral and the followed, following day he was buried at sea with military honors. About 2300 hours. On the 17th of April, Missouri detected an enemy submarine, 12 miles or 19 kilometers from her formation. Her report set off a hunter-killer operation by the light carrier Bataan of four destroyers, which sank the Japanese submarine I-56. Missouri was detached from the carrier task force of Okinawa on the 5th of May and sailed for Ulity. During the Okinawa campaign, she had shot down five enemy planes, assisted in the destruction of six others and scored one probable kill. She helped repel 12 daylight and 4 nighttime attacks that targeted her carrier task group. Her shore bombardment destroyed several gun emplacements and many other military, governmental and industrial structures. The USS Missouri arrived at Ulity on the 9th of May and then proceeded to Opera Harbor and Guam, arriving there on the 18th. Admiral William F. Halsey Jr., commander of the 3rd Fleet, would bring his staff from the cruiser Louisville onto the Missouri that afternoon. She left the harbor on the 21st of May and by the 27th was conducting shore bombardments again on Japanese positions on Okinawa. She led the 3rd Fleet against strikes to airfields and installations on Kyushu on the 2nd and 3rd of June. On the 5th and 6th of June, the fleet was hit by a fierce storm, and although the Missouri had some of her topside fittings damaged, she suffered no major damage. On the 8th of June, her fleet struck Kyushu again, and then hit hard in a coordinated air surface bombardment. The fleet then retired towards light. 
on the 13th of June, she arrived at San Pedro Bay in light, with nearly three months of continuous operations in the support of the Okinawa campaign. She and the powerful Third Fleet would head out to the heart of Japan and strike in the heart of the nation from within its own waters. On the 8th of July, the fleet set a northerly course to approach the Japanese mainland, Honshu. The raids took Tokyo by surprise on the 10th of July, and the first raid was followed by more devastation at the juncture of Honshu and Hokkaido, the second largest in Japanese island on the 13th and 14th of July. For the first time, naval gunfire destroyed a major installation within the home islands when the USS Missouri joined in a shore bombardment on the 15th of July that severely damaged the Neon Steel Company and the Wanishi Ironworks at Murunran, Hokkaido. During the nights of the 17th and 18th of July, Missouri bombarded industrial targets in Honshu. Inland sea aerial strikes continued through the 25th of July, and Missouri guarded the carriers as they attacked the Japanese home islands. Strikes on Hokkaido and northern Honshu resumed on the 9th of August, the day the second atomic bomb was dropped. After the Japanese agreed to surrender, Admiral Sir Bruce Fraser of the Royal Navy, the commander of the British Pacific Fleet, aboard the Missouri on the 16th of August, and conferred the honor of Knight Grand Cross of the Order of the British Empire upon Admiral Halsey. Missouri transferred a landing party of 200 officers and men to the battleship Iowa for temporary duty with the initial occupation force for Tokyo on the 21st of August. Missouri herself entered Tokyo Bay early on the 29th of August to prepare for the signing by Japan of the official instrument of surrender. High-ranking military officials of all the Allied powers were received on board on 2nd of September including Chinese General Xu Yung Chang, British Admiral of the Fleet Sir Bruce Fraser, Soviet Lieutenant General Kuzma Nikolovich Derevyanko, yeah, me and Russian names, go figure, Australian General Sir Thomas Blaney, Canadian Colonel Lawrence Moore Cosgrave, French General d'Armée Philippe Leclerc, Dutch Vice Admiral Conrad Emil Lambert Helfrich and New Zealand Air Vice Marshal Le uh, Leonard M. Isset. Fleet Admiral Chester Nimitz boarded shortly after 800 hours and General of the Army Douglas MacArthur, the Supreme Command of the Allies, came on board at 0843 hours. The Japanese representatives, headed by Foreign Minister uh, Mamoru Shigomitsu, arrived at 856 hours. At 0902, General Magada stepped before a battery of microphones and opened the 23-minute surrender ceremony to the waiting world by stating, It is my earnest hope, indeed the hope of all mankind, that from this solemn occasion a better world shall emerge out of the blood and carnage of the past, a world founded upon faith and understanding a world dedicated to the dignity of man and the fulfillment of his most cherished wish for freedom, tolerance and justice. By 0930 hours, the Japanese emissaries had departed. In the afternoon of the 5th of September, Admiral Halsey transferred his flag to the battleship South Dakota and early the next day, Missouri departed Tokyo Bay. As part of the ongoing Operation Magic Carpet, she received homeward-bound passages at Guam then sailed unescorted for Hawaii. She arrived at Pearl Harbor on the 20th of September and flew Admiral Nimitz's flag on the afternoon of the 28th of September for a reception. The next day, Missouri departed for New York City and reached its destination on the 23rd of October and hoisted the flag of Atlantic Fleet Commander Admiral Jonas Ingram. Four days later, Missouri boomed out a 20-gun Salute as President Truman boarded for Navy Day ceremonies. In the years to come, the Missouri was overhauled and sent on training cruises. She also received the remains of the Turkish ambassador to the United States and set out for Istanbul. Once there, she rendered full honors, including a 19-gun salute during the transfer of the remains of the late ambassador, and again during the funeral ashore. She would then go to Greece in anti-communist actions, 
As the Soviet Union was pushing for concessions and the Dadakanese to be included in the peace treaty with Italy, throughout the latter half of the 1940s, various service branches of the US had been reducing their inventories from the World War II levels. As part of this contraction, three of the Iowa-class battleships had been deactivated and decommissioned. However, President Truman refused to allow Missouri to be decommissioned. Truman ordered Missouri to be maintained with the active fleet, partly because of his fondness for the battleship and partly because the battleship had been christened by his daughter. When, in 1950, the Korean War broke out, President Truman ordered US forces stationed in Japan into South Korea. He also sent US-based troops, tanks and fighter and bomber aircraft and a strong naval force to Korea, which included the US Missouri which departed Norfolk on the 18th and 19th of August. Get your facts straight, Michael. <laughs> she would once again become flagship, this time for Rear Admiral Alan Atwood Smith. She would bombard Sam Chuck on the 15th of September in an attempt to divert troops and attention from the Inkian landings. This was also the first time since the Second World War that she would fire her guns in anger, and in company with the cruiser Helena and two destroyers, she helped prepare the way for the US 8th Army Offensive. When she was flagship of Vice Admiral A.D. Strubble, commander of the 7th, she would conduct bombardments of the East Coast from the 12th to the 26th of October, and screen aircraft carriers. After a full-scale assault by Chinese forces against the UN troops on the 19th of October, UN assets were shuffled in order to cover a retreat. The Missouri was moved into Hungnam on the 23rd of December to provide gunfire support until the last UN troops, the US 3rd Infantry Division, were evacuated by way of the sea on the 24th of December. After she conducted additional operation with carriers and shore bombardments, Missouri would be relieved of duty in the Far East. When she arrived back in Norfolk, she would engage in two midshipman training cruises and an overhaul, overhaul which lasted from the 18th of October 1951 until 30th of January 1952. Missouri would resume service in the Korean theater in October of 1952 where she would provide artillery support by bombarding enemy targets. In January of 1953, she would resume Cobra patrol along the east coast of Korea to support troops ashore. The last bombardment mission by Missouri was against the Kojo area on the 25th of March. Her commanding officer, Captain Werner R. Edsel, suffered a fatal heart attack while conning up through the submarine net at Sasebo. She was relieved as the 7th Fleet flagship on April 6th by her old sister in the USS New Jersey. She was again sent back to Norfolk for a midshipman training cruise, this time as flagship for Rear Admiral E.T. Woolridge. She was again overhauled and was made flagship for Rear Admiral R.E. Kirby, who relieved Admiral Woolridge. She would depart Norfolk on June 7th as flagship of a midshipman training cruise to Lisbon and Chabot where she would be joined by her three sisters, New Jersey, Wisconsin and Iowa, and it would be the only time when all four ships sailed together. She would return to Norfolk on August 3rd and depart 20 days later for an activation on the west coast. Missouri arrived in Seattle on the 15th of September, and three days later she entered Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, where she was decommissioned on the 26th of February 1955, and be entered in the Bramerton Group Pacific Reserve Fleet. Here, she became a popular tourist attraction, logging about 180,000 visitors per year, who came to view the surrender deck, while a bronze plaque memorialized the spot where Japan surrendered. It would be nearly 30 years before she would be reactivated into active service. In the summer of 1984, she would be reactivated and towed by the salvage ship Beaufort to the Long Beach Naval Yard under the Reagan administration's program to build a 600-ship navy. Here, she would undergo modernization and advance for recommissioning. During this modernization, Missouri's 20 and 40mm AA guns and 4 out of her 10 5-inch guns were removed. Over the next months, she was upgraded with the most advanced weaponry available, including 4 Mark 141 quad-cell launchers for 16 Harpoon anti-ship missiles. 8 Mark 143 armored box launchers um, for 
32 BGM 109 Tomahawk cruise missiles and a quadrant of phalanx close in weapon system Gatling guns for defense against anti ship missiles and enemy aircraft. Also included in the modernization were upgrades to radar and fire control systems and improved electronic warfare cap capabilities. Missouri's 800 pound or 360 kilogram bell was formally returned after it had been removed from the battleship for the sesquicentennial celebrations of the state of Missouri and sent to Jefferson City. She was formally recommissioned in San Francisco on May 10, 1986. Secretary of Defense Caspar Weinberger instructed the crew during the recommissioning ceremony to Listen for the footsteps of those who have gone before you. They speak to you of honor and the importance of duty. They remind you of your own traditions. Also present at the recommissioning was Margaret Truman, who gave a short speech and ended it with, Now take care of my baby. Her remark was met with rounds of applause from the crew. Four months later, Missouri departed her new home port of Long Beach for an around-the-world cruise, visiting Pearl Harbor, Sydney, Hobart, Perth, Diego, Diego Garcia, the Suez Canal, Istanbul, Naples, Rota, Lisbon, and the Panama Canal. Missouri became the first American battleship to circumnavigate the globe since Theodore Roosevelt's Great White Fleet, 80 years before, which included the first battleship named USS Missouri, designation BB-11. In 1987, Missouri was outfitted with 40mm grenade launchers and 25mm chain guns and sent to take part in Operation Ernest Will, where she would escort Kuwaiti oil tankers in the Persian Gulf. This was because of Iranian manned Swedish made Boghammer cigarette boats operating in the Persian Gulf at the time. As a centerpiece of Battle Group Echo, Missouri escorted tanker convoys to the Strait of Hormuz, keeping her fire control systems trained on land based Iranian silkworm missile launchers. On the 2nd of August 1990, Iraqi troops led by President Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. U.S. President George H.W. Bush, keeping with the Carter Doctrine, sent the first of several hundred thousand troops, along with strong naval support to Saudi Arabia and the Persian Gulf, to support a multinational force in a standoff with Iraq. Missouri departed on the 13th of November 1990 for the troubled waters of the Persian Gulf. During subsequent operations leading up to Desert Storm, Missouri prepared to launch Tomahawk land attack missiles, or T-LAMs for short, and provide naval gunfire support as required. She fired the first of 27 Tomahawks against Iraqi targets at 0140 hours on the 17th of January 1991, with the others spread out over the next five days. She would shell an Iraqi command and control bunker near the Saudi border, firing her 16-inch guns for the first time in a combat situation since March 1953 off the coast of Korea. Missouri bombarded Iraqi beach defenses and occupied Kuwait on the night of February 3rd, firing 112 16-inch shells over the next three days, until relieved by the USS Wisconsin. She would fire another 60 rounds of Kavishi, on the 11th and 12th of February, before steaming north to Laika Island. She would fire 133 shells during four shore bombardment missions as part of the amphibious landing feint against the Kuwaiti shoreline, the morning of 23rd of February. The feint worked, and Iraqis fired two HI-2 Silkworm missiles at the battleship, one of which missed. The other missile was intercepted by a Sea Dart missile launched from a British air defense destroyer HMS Gloucestershire within 19 seconds and crashed in the sea roughly 650 meters in front of the Missouri. The Missouri was involved in a friendly fire accident. According to the official report, the Phalanx CIWS of the Oliver Hazard Perry class frigate Jarrett engaged the chaff countermeasures fired by the Missouri, which is used against enemy missiles. Stray rounds struck the Missouri, one penetrating through a bulkhead and embedding itself into an interior passageway. Another passed the forward funnel. A sailor aboard the USS Missouri was struck in the neck by flying shrapnel and suffered minor injuries. Many people are skeptical about the incident, 
as the Jared was over 2 miles away and the phalanx system will normally not target chaff as a threat and engage it. The rounds that hit the Missouri are from the Jared, there's no dispute about that, nor that it was an accident, but it is suspected that the phalanx operated on the Jared may have accidentally fired off a few rounds manually, although there's no evidence to support this. On the 26th of February, combat operations were out of range of the battleship's weapons, and the Missouri had fired a total of 783 rounds of 16-inch gun shells and launched 28 Tomahawk cruise missiles during the campaign. She would conduct patrol and armistice enforcement operations in the northern Persian Gulf until sailing home on the 21st of March. She would stop at Fremantle and Hobart, Australia, and Pearl Harbor before arriving home in April. She spent the remainder of the year conducting type training and other local operations, the latter including 7th of December Voyage of Remembrance to mark the 50th anniversary of the Pearl Harbor attack in 1941. During this ceremony, Missouri hosted President George H. W. Bush, the first presidential visit for the warship since Harry S. Truman boarded the ship in September 1947. With the collapse of the Soviet Union in early 1990 and the absence of a perceived threat to the United States came drastic cuts in the defense budget. The high cost of maintaining and operating battleships as part of the US Navy's active fleet became uneconomical. As a result, the Missouri was decommissioned on the 31st of March 1992 at Long Beach, California, after 16 total years of active service. Her last commanding officer, Captain Albert L. Case, wrote in the ship's final plan of the day. Our final day has arrived. Today, the final chapter in Battleship Missouri's history will be written. It's often said that the crew makes the command. There is no true statement, for it's the crew of this great ship that made this a great command. You are a special breed of sailors and marines, and I am proud to have served with each and every one of you. To you who have made the painful journey of putting this great lady to sleep, I thank you. For you have had the toughest job, to put away a ship that has become as much a part of you as you are to her, is a sad ending to a great tour. But take solace in this. You have lived up to the history of the ship and those who have sailed her before us. We took her to war, performed magnificently and added another chapter in her history, standing side by side our forerunners in true naval tradition. God bless you all. Missouri returned to be part of the U.S. Navy fleet at Puget Sound Naval Shipyard, Bremerton, Washington, until the 12th of January, 1995, when she was struck from a naval vessel register. The U.S. Navy wanted to pair a symbol of the end of World War II with one representing its beginning. Therefore, on the 4th of May, 1998, Secretary of Navy John H. Dalton signed the donation contract that transferred it to the non-profit USS Missouri Memorial Association of Honolulu, Hawaii. She was towed from Bremerton on the 23rd of May, firstly to Astoria, Oregon, where she would sit in fresh water to kill and drop the saltwater barnacles and seagrasses that had grown on a hull, and then towed across the eastern Pacific to be docked at Fort Island, Pearl Harbor, on the 22nd of June just 500 yards from the Arizona Memorial. Less than a year later, on the 29th of January 1999, Missouri was opened as a museum ship operated by the MMA. The National Park Service met the idea to move the Missouri to Pearl Harbor with some resistance. This is because they were afraid that the USS Missouri, which became synonymous with the end of World War II, would overshadow the battleship Arizona which is synonymous with the beginning of the conflict. The Missouri was placed well back from and facing towards the Arizona Memorial, so that military ceremonies would not have sight of the Arizona. To have the bow of the Missouri face Arizona Memorial is to convey that the Missouri watches over the remains of Arizona, so that those interred within Arizona's hull may rest in peace. In October 2009, Missouri was moved from the from a birding station on Battleship Row to a dry dock, where she would undergo a three-month overhaul, which was priced at $18 million, which included a new anti-corrosion system, repainting the hull, upgrading internal mechanisms, and even repairing leakage on the starboard side. She would be reopened on the 30th of January, 2010. 
The USS Missouri received a lot of awards, among eight battle stars for servants during World War II, five during the Korean War, and three during the Gulf War. The other awards included, but are not limited to, the Combat Action Ribbon, Navy Meritorious Unit Commendation, Navy E Ribbon with Readed Battle E Device, China Service Medal, Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal with 3 Service Stars, World War II Victory Medal, and Korean Service Medal with 5 Stars. I hope you enjoyed this episode of General History Talks, where we took a look at the last United States Navy battleship, the Mighty Mo, which you can visit and why. Leave a like if you like this, subscribe to my channel, and share this with your friends. If you want to leave a comment, and if that comment contains a notable subject to discuss in a future episode, I will take it into consideration. Should you have the opportunity to visit the USS Missouri, please also pay respect to the Arizona Memorial and take a moment to remember the brave men and women all over the world who have risked their lives and still risk their lives for us and our freedoms. I know I would if I ever have the chance. I hope to see you in the next episode. Take care.